Unit 7, Extending to Three Dimensions. Student outcomes for this lesson is to review the area formula for rectangles with rational side lengths and prove the area formula for an arbitrary rectangle. You will also use a square grid to estimate the area of a curved region using lower approximations, upper approximations, and average approximations. This has a relative contribution to calculus. So what is area? It is the extent or measurement of the surface or space. An example of this would be length times width for a rectangle. We're being asked to find the area of the rectangles that are pictured on our screen or on your paper. And in some cases you need to count the units and just make sure that you're counting them appropriately. In this case the the increments are one for each unit, and I see that the width is three on the rectangle to the left, and I can count that there are five units for the length. So the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. That means the area of this rectangle is 15. So all of this region here is represented by the area of 15. If we look to the right, we are given values for the width and the length, and all we have to do is multiply them because it is a rectangle. So we have 5 thirds times 3 fourths. Go across and multiply, we get 15 over 12, and that reduces to 5 fourths. And for those of you brainiacs, who saw that you could cancel out the threes right away, by all means do so, and you get five-fourths right away. So for example one, in the first case scenario, we're asked to use the unit squares to find the area of the rectangle pictured, and whose side lengths measure radical three units by radical two units. So I'm just going to count up the shaded region. If I go from here to here, it's roughly about a little over 1.7. And I'm going to multiply that to a little over 1.4. So I'm going to use 1.4. I get a product equal to 2.38. Now we're being asked to use the area formula to find the area of the rectangle pictured. I'm going to use radical 2, the width, times a radical 3, and that's equivalent to radical 6. Okay, and that's, if you put that in the calculator, the decimal equivalent is roughly approximately equal to 2.5. Now in part A, what they really wanted us to do is count up all the green spots there, but that would, you know, that's a little futile because we can see they give the measurements here, we know to multiply them. But if we want to answer the question, which answer is more precise, the one with the exact value is more precise, which is this one, part B, because exact values are exactly as what they're stated as to be, exact values. This value up here is more of an approximation and that's not exact. So the one that's more precise is radical six. Example two, if it takes one can of paint to cover a unit square in the coordinate plane, how many cans of paint are needed to paint the region within the curved figure? So the curved figure in this case is called an ellipse. Kind of looks like an egg. Or one of those Goodyear blimps. When we don't have perfect polygons and we want to find the area, we have to use um, another method. And 
one of them is here. We're going to start with finding a lower approximation, and then we'll do an upper approximation and take the average of the two to get the best case scenario. So we're looking for the number of cans of paint needed. So for step one, we're going to count up as many unit boxes as we can, and as you can see, we've got some half boxes there, so you're going to count two of them as one. So go ahead and do that right now. Don't forget to press pause. So I get about 34 square units. So this strategy says that it takes more than 34 cans of paint, in my opinion, or my estimation. And that's only because it takes one can of paint to cover a unit square. That's according to the instructions up here. Now, we'll do an upper approximation and we'll estimate the number of square units that contain the curve. So it's going to be a little on the inside, well, it's going to be all on the inside and a little on the outside. Go ahead and do that now. Make sure you pause. So under this strategy, finding the upper approximation, I come up with, an, uh, with about 55 square units. So this strategy suggests less than 55 cans of paint. Because there's some overage here, so we have to be less than in this case. And there's some underage in the lower approximation, so we're going to need more than in the first case. So we're going to take the two approximations and then find the average in order to estimate the area inside the curve. So that's 55 plus 34 divided in half is equal to approximately 44 and a half cans of paint. So I would bump that up to 45 cans of paint. Now I know this one's hard to see on your paper and um, being that you can see it now I'm just going to go over it. So we have a lower estimation for the first picture. And I come up with 21 for that, so 21 square units. And then for the upper estimation, I come up with about 37 square units. So we're going to take the average of the two. and we get an average estimate for the area inside the curve to be 29. I strongly suggest that you copy this into your composition notebook, this grid. Or take a picture of it and put it in your notebook or get a copy of it if somehow. This is very important for the Regents exam. You need to know these formulas in order to use them adequately. One way to remember that the area of a circle is if you read it, A can represent apple. So apple pi r squares are good. And then for the circumference of a circle, cherry pies are too. Okay, so cherry pies are two. Get it? So apple pies are square, are good, and cherry pies are two. So using these formulas, we're going to find the area of the figures in the exercises. So I recognize that I have a parallelogram, so that's a quadrilateral. And we usually know that a quadrilateral of some sort is length times width, but we can also equate that to base times height. And I'm using this formula here. 
So the base is 20 and the height is this 8. So 20 times 8 is equal to 160 square units. In order to find the area in the circumference of the circle, the area I'm going to find first is equal to pi r squared because they're good and cherry pies are too. So we need the radius in order to find this. They did not ask me to round to any place and we all know that pi symbol is equal to an irrational number and an irrational number is a decimal that goes on and on and on and it's crazy and erratic. It's an ugly number. So um, I'm just going to leave it in terms of pi. So for the first one, area is equal to 49 pi, because 7 squared is equal to 49. I'll write that down here in case you didn't know where I got that from. But this is the final answer in terms of pi. And of course, if I asked you to round to the tenths place, then you're going to take 49 and multiply it out with pi. Uh, and do not use 3.14. Use the pi symbol on your calculator, because that's going to give you the best approximation. And for the circumference, we're just going to double the radius, which is 14, and write it in terms of pi, so 14 pi. So for number 3, we want to find the area of a square that has a diagonal length of 7 radical 2. So I'm going to draw a picture of a square. Here's my diagonal. We know that a square has right angles, and 7 radical 2 represents the hypotenuse of that right triangle. In a square, we also know that all four sides are equal, so I'm just going to focus on the right triangle. That means the two legs are congruent. And if we want to find the area of the square, um, we're going to have to find the legs so that we can um, take the value of the side and square it. And the reason as to why we're going to take the value on the side to square it is because it is a quadrilateral, it's base times height or length times width, but in a square all sides are equal so it's going to be side times side which gives me side square. Now if you think back to special right triangles and when you have two legs congruent then automatically we can conclude that the two angles, the two acute angles that is, of a right triangle measure 45 degrees. And there's a special relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse as a result. So since I know that the diagonal is 7 radical 2, all I have to do is take away the 7 here, or split it apart, or break it up, and I know that the lengths of the legs are each equal to 7. Because the relationship that the legs have to the hypotenuse is leg to leg, which are the same, and it's whatever the leg is times radical 2. So now I found that the length of the side of the square is 7. I can plug that in here and square it and get an area of 49 square centimeters. Find the area of an equilateral triangle in which the sides measure 4 inches. So here's my equilateral triangle, and we all know that we have equal sides, equal angles. I'm going to drop a perpendicular. And when we do that in an equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle, that creates two congruent right triangles, and it also bisects the other side. So the area formula for a triangle is 1 half base times the height, and in order to get the height, I need to find the value of the altitude, the perpendicular line here. I'm going to use uh, Pythagorean's theorem in order to find that. I have the length of the hypotenuse, and I have one leg. It's the other leg we're looking for. So 4 squared is equal to 16. I'm going to subtract 2 squared, which is 4, from that. I get x squared is equal to 12 
I'm going to take the square root of both sides and I get x is equal to we're going to, we're going to simplify radical 12 so that breaks down to 4 times 3 4 is a perfect square so it's 2 radical 3 now I can find the area by substitution so 2 radical 3 times 4, the whole entire base is 4, don't forget that, divided in half is equal to 8 radical 3, take the 2, divide it out, and we get an area of 4 radical 3, and that's square inches.